Hello everyone, this is RaySpace here to talk about the mods that I'm going to use with the Promised Worlds mod in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. The Promised Worlds mod I introduced in the previous video is one that adds other star systems to the stock system and the goal was to remake KSP1 into what KSP2 was supposed to be. And so I'm going to pick mods that are going to do that based on the recommendations of the Promised Worlds modders. And I'm going to be basically trying to continue my All the Crazy Things series in this setting. So it's not going to be a pure stock situation anymore, but we will have the stock parts. Uh, we'll just have more parts uh, in order to get further along. And that's good because I was pretty much at the top of the tech tree in all the crazy things anyway. So this is going to be called Even More Crazy Things. So that'll be the title. It'll be Kerbal Space Program Promised Worlds Even More Crazy Things. Let's take a look at what I've got in the install so far and talk about what I'm going to add. And then you folks watching can give me further recommendations if necessary. So uh, these two are required by... Promise Worlds, Harmony is just a utility thing, so is that. Chatter, of course, I throw in all the time. That has Kerbals talking. Environmental Visual Enhancements is necessary for clouds. Uh, that ties in with Scatterer and the Stock Scatterer configs and Volumetric Clouds. This is Black Rack's Volumetric Clouds at work. And then Copernicus and Copernicus Expansion allow the addition of additional planets and star systems. And so Promise Worlds depends on those as well. And Promise Worlds also requires Scale Decorator. Modular Flight Integrator comes with Copernicus. And that's the squad folder. So that's the main mods. And then I also have Pekka's Warp Thrust mod. So the question is what I'm going to add to this. And one modder uh, suggested uh, Teco's Stock Plant Revamp. It was Teco's own mod. And this one revamps the stock system. And so we're going to have better quality stock things is the goal here. And it is reasonably hefty, uh, 1.88 gigabytes once unzipped. And it uh, told me to, uh, I wanted to download it off of CCAN, but in CCAN, if you try to go to Teco's stock plant revamp, I'll download everything else from CCAN. Uh, but it says this download is currently outdated. Install from GitHub master file for best experience. So that's what I'm doing. Let's take a look at its requirements. It requires Copernicus, Copernicus expansion, and Neocos, uh, Copernicus utilities, which we already have. We have Scatterer. We have Blackrack stock volumetric clouds. It is compatible with Parallax Continued, but we don't need it. So maybe we should get Parallax Continued as well. And so I've downloaded this. I'm going to unzip it now. Now, all the crazy things was a science mode series. So we're going to have to have something that extends the tech tree, and that means community tech tree. Hopefully, all the parts will be placed in an appropriate location. I won't be using mods that don't put themselves in an appropriate location. So we've got that plant revamp. And so we need community tech tree. And we're also going to be using a lot of Nertea's mods. So community tech tree. I'm not going to do life support. I'm just going to select a bunch of things and then I'll show you the change set. Now, I don't know whether when I use Parallax Continued with TPR or any of the other mods like Promise Worlds, whether I should even be having the planet textures, scatter textures, or terrain textures. Um, I guess scatter textures and terrain textures, but plant textures? It seems like the other mods would already be handling that, so I'm not sure. I'm curious about Kerbal Colonies. It seems vaguely interesting, but I don't know about the functionality. If we take a look here, We've got a trailer that I'm not going to watch just yet, but it uses KK groups as facilities, so there's no parts. Uh, but it says that a, a colony can be built from any command module and it costs 5,000 rocket parts. I think the rocket parts are what come out of extraplanetary launch pads, which I am going to install. Though it doesn't actually mention that here. Oh, um, additional dependencies, yeah used for more resources. So maybe 
I won't install that yet, but I'll think about that. All right, well, I have a lot of mods here, but a lot of them are requirements for what I actually selected. So they'll automatically be installed if you select the ones I selected. Uh, so the first two here, Far Future Technologies uh, is the one that I selected. The general line seems to be that uh, Promise Worlds uh, KSP2 Vision, to a large extent, is using a lot of Nertea's mods to fill that out, to, you know, bring about what KSP2 was supposed to be in KSP1. So I've got a lot of Nertea mods, including Far Future here. Uh, I do have Raster Prop Monitor, just in case I want to control things in IVA, which will be very nice and scenic. Um, Click-through blocker and toolbar controller are required by a lot of Linux Guru Gamer mods, and I've got a few of those. And... Uh, Raster Prop Monitor uh, requires, to some extent, these ASET packs. Uh, these add other internals for the IVAs. So I've got those. They're required by stuff like the Mark I cockpit IVA replacement and stuff like that. So tweak scale, I don't know. You guys tell me whether you think I should be using tweak scale or not. I'm of two minds about that. So I'm not sure whether I should be using tweak scale or not. Um, it will provide some more flexibility, but to some extent, we could keep it pure with the part sizes. Uh, dynamic battery storage is required by Far Future and Near Future stuff. Community category kit required by Kerbal Inventory System and Planetary Base Systems. Those are the two that I added there. Far Future requires this. This, require, this is required by that. Uh, custom pre-launch checks is required by Kerbal Constructs, which I'll be using to decorate bases potentially. I already discussed the possibility of using Kerbal Colonies, which I don't have in here yet, but uh, Kerbal Colonies requires Kerbal Constructs. Uh, docking functions is required by Infernal Robotics. I may be using the robotics, I may not, we'll see. Uh, Lackluster Labs, I do like the modules in Lackluster Labs, so we're going to have those and maybe they'll be a different kind of ship or base or something like that. Far Future requires that. This an object enhancement is a standard sort of visual mod. Near Future Electrical, Near Future Solar. Uh, rocket Sound Enhancement I mainly use to protect my ears so that if it's a loud rocket, uh, its uh, volume is limited. So Rocket Sound Enhancement helps with that. That's required by Far Future. That's basically a raster prop monitor thing. Uh, that's required by Far Future. And here, System Heat is a dependency of Far Future and uh, Near Future IVA props, of course, by a bunch of stuff. Parallax Continued is said to be uh, intended to be a recommendation or requirement for Promised Worlds and also for the visual enhancement that we had for the stock system. A distant object enhancement. I thought we already had that. <laughs> but. Uh, this is another bit of it somehow. Um, okay, that's the default config, yeah. Okay, Infernal Robotics, um, Kerbal Constructs, Lackluster Labs, I already discussed as a different shape to things. Near Future Propulsion, Near Future Solar, we had another Near Future Solar thing. Planet Shine, um, I don't know whether I need the default configuration, but it didn't seem like the visual upgrade that we picked up has a planet shine configuration so uh and again rocket sound, sound enhancement but sock like station parts expansion i took to be one of the recommendations from the modders so for promise worlds so uh that is what i'll use since it's recommended and yeah tweak scale again uh you guys tell me Atmospheric autopilot, I, I don't know whether I'll be doing space plane things, but maybe. Community tech tree, like I said, if we're going to move forward, I'll be doing science modes. So if we're going to move forward, we need that. The magic orbital science to get science, we could use that. Extraplanetary launch pads will be in a different star system. So it's going to be super inconvenient to build things and then ship everything over constantly. So. We want extra planetary launch pads, far future, yes, hangar extender, because we might be building big things. Uh, heat control, I think, is uh, basically required by far future. Infernal robotics I discussed, Kerbal alarm clock, obviously, 
Uh, I don't use the stock version of the block. So Kerbal inventory system, uh, that's a backup for the stock inventory system, just in case that's not working in certain cases. Kerbal planetary base systems, different shape to the base modules. And with, with their Natea mods, I don't know if there are any base modules. So I, I decided I wanted that just in case we're short of base modules because I'm not throwing in the USI stuff in this case. Uh, I'm Maybe people think I should, and if you think so, I will. But for now, I don't have the Umbra Space Industries things. Coronal Vessel Viewer, that will allow me to capture the vessels that I create as a blueprint that might be helpful. PSP Logger, that would be useful if I'm deciding to do automated stuff and we'll have the data displayed in a way so I'll have the UI off. Uh, Lackluster Labs Extra Parts is just extra parts for Lackluster Labs. Mark IV Space Plane System is apparently by Nertea, so we might as well. These are IVA replacements based on raster prop monitor and ASET, near future construction, electrical, exploration, propulsion, spacecraft, all the Nertea stuff. Uh, this is uh, structures to be used with Kerbal constructs, so we may or may not be seeing any of that. Raster prop monitor I discussed, scan sat so that we can do better science uh, and especially pinpoint where the resources are. We will have plenty of resources, hopefully. Uh, simple logistics, that will help with the base building. I don't want to connect everything with Kerbal Attachment System. So stock alike station parts expansion I discussed. And system heat was required. I don't know if I need all these configurations, but maybe. Uh, tweak scale discussed and universal storage is often used with Kerbal inventory system. So that's a lot of stuff and no no recommendations. <laughs> I should have ship manifest and a no ferrum um, Kerbal attachment system is trying to sneak in. Restock. Now I I don't know about restock. It'll probably break the existing ships for all the crazy things. So we'll hold off on restock for now. Now, mind you, I have 64 gigabytes of RAM, so I can do this. Uh, whether everybody else can do this is a whole other business. We'll see if it runs at the end. I'll give it some time. All right, everything is in and we are loading. It's a mere 13,000 patches, apparently. The one warning was there even before these mods were introduced. So there's some warning with the smaller set that I already had with Promised Worlds. And we are going to see how much RAM it's going to take right on loading. Okay, well, we've got some warnings here. Oop, something's happened. All right. Um, Celestial Body Elu is missing the Parallax PQS mod. Well, whose fault was that? Copernicus was not able to load the custom planetary system due to an exception in the loading process. Okay, well, we've got too many things. Um, I'm going to try and getting rid of the planetary textures from Parallax. Parallax continued. Because I think there's too many planetary mods if we have that in here. So, I mean, it's looking good back there. To be honest, let me just see. Um, let's see, say if we start a new game sandbox first. Yeah, that's fine. Right now it's about 10 gigabytes of RAM, which is not bad. I mean, my realism overhaul stuff is like 32. It's taking a while to load it. Maybe it can't load it. Okay, it looks like the problem was not the planet textures from Parallax continued, but actually Teco's planet revamp was conflicting with something, and it wasn't Parallax. So I have to figure out what that is so I can get back in here. So 
I managed to load without the plant revamp and let me just start and use sandbox thing here to check that it loads into the game but yeah there's some conflict and that's quite possible we did put in a few things so if we take a look at uh, the planetary revamp here by Teco there's a lot of stuff going on in these this config folder there's home swaps and stuff and uh, a stock killer and rescales and parallax configs but in principle I guess it's all set by the settings file which is this and so it says you know scale stock like that and then homeworld Kerbin like that so in theory those files aren't supposed to be doing a whole lot of stuff but we do have it modifying all these worlds like that and it has its own textures here again I tried getting rid of the planet textures here while TPR was in and that did not solve the problem only removing TPR solved the problem uh, but just in case it's something else it conflicted with I decided to get rid of this object enhancement and planet shine so that's all I can think of but it was said to be working with promised worlds so we assume all the requirements of promised worlds are okay most of these things are not relevant to the planets um, the things that are are environmental visual enhancements and the uh, volumetric clouds but it was said that it was compatible with those and of course it's compatible with Copernicus so other than that there's not much else going on here that would affect the planets so I'm gonna give it one more try having gotten rid of plant shine in particular and we'll see whether that works yeah no luck and it's all to do with this celestial body elu is missing the parallax pqs mod and then it says copernicus was not able to load the custom planetary system due to an exception in the loading process so yeah sorry teko i can't use the plant revamp just yet uh, we'll have to figure out what's going on with that but maybe by the time I start the series in full flow I'll be able to figure that out or we'll be able to figure that out and I can use it for now this has been a discussion of the mods that I'm going to be using in the new series of promised worlds and if you have other recommendations knowing what I have right now please do share them uh, though we're you know we've got fairly good selection right now as it is and hopefully this is the intention of the Thomas Worlds mod as far as what we should be having we will see how it goes so it, and it will be a science mode thing so with that thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time